On Sunday, 19th of February, Ecuador will become the world's first country to hold a referendum to ban politicians and civil servants from having assets in tax havens. This will happen on the same day as Ecuador's general elections and is part of a bigger effort by the country to crack down on tax havens and to introduce global justice on the, in tax issues. We're very pleased, new internationalists, to have here speaking with us Ecuador's Foreign Affairs Minister, Mr. Guillermo Long. Amala Superonem, Web Editorial Assistant at New Internationalist, and I begin this interview by asking Mr. Long why Ecuador is pressing on this issue at the moment and what impact tax havens have on his country and on the global south in general. Tax havens are one of the biggest obstacles to uh, the development of our country and to the reduction of uh, dire inequalities and to the poverty reduction for a country like Ecuador. We calculate that uh, an amount equivalent to roughly 30% of our GDP, our GDP is $100 billion roughly, that's Ecuador's GDP, so 30% of that, $30 billion, uh, is hidden in tax havens. Um, now, obviously, that money would do a lot in Ecuador, it would do a lot of good if it was invested, it would stimulate the economy, it would generate growth, it would create jobs, and it would also pay taxes. Uh, these taxes would be uh, crucial in order for public infrastructure to be built, for uh, to, to invest in uh, competitive, uh, uh, yeah, in, in, in kind of a systemic competitiveness, so connectivity, airports, ports, highways, hospitals, schools, universities, all these things that make you much more competitive and enable you to move away from this kind of raw materials driven productive matrix to a much more sophist sophisticated economy. Uh, this is uh, uh, an, an old, I would say, cause, struggle of the global si south going back to the 1960s. How are we, are we going to finance development? And of course in the context of Latin America, and Ecuador is no exception, uh, Latin America is shamefully for Latin Americans the most unequal continent in the world. It's not the poorest continent in the world. Uh, if you look at uh, kind of per capita GDP, it may even be the middle class of the world. But if you look more closely at, at the huge inequalities that we have within our countries, it's the most unequal continent in the world. Ecuador's moved in the last 10 years from being one of the three most unequal con uh, countries in our region to being one of the three most equal or least unequal, I prefer still to use, countries in our region, but still that's not enough. 